topics a little bit and talk about some strategies for ending sexual violence. Uh, the first is primary prevention. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing tonight. It's making sure that everyone understands what consent is and then we all know the definition of rape and sexual assault. It means that we're all taking that responsibility to obtain consent in every situation that we go into and it means respecting boundaries. If someone says no, that means no. Now, the next approach is bystander intervention. That's probably something that most of you have heard before. Uh, it's being able to recognize a sketchy situation uh, where someone's boundaries are being crossed, where they're not comfortable with what's happening, and being able to intervene into that situation in an appropriate manner. And the third is risk reduction strategies. And risk reduction strategies are strategies that an individual uses to lower their risk of being assaulted. And that's things like carrying mace on your keychain, or taking a self-defense course, or setting boundaries. And setting boundaries is one that you may not commonly think of, but it's a really important skill to have. And at the WGAC, we use an acronym to remember how to set boundaries. And that's SAFE. S, say it, A, again, F, firm, and E, exit. And now me and Cole want to go through each one of those steps just so that everyone in here has a good understanding of how to set boundaries. All right, so the first step is S, say it. It's really useful because maybe the other person didn't realize that they were crossing a boundary. And that doesn't only apply to sexual situations. It could be something like, no, I don't want to dance with you. It's also really helpful because it allows for bystanders in the area to hear that there's something going on that you're not comfortable with. And the second step in setting boundaries is again. And that means that by this time, this person hasn't listened to your boundary once, so you really want to clearly name that boundary again and make sure they know exactly what you want from the situation. So telling them, I don't want to dance with you. And this is also really important because it gives bystanders a second chance to kind of hear what's going on and maybe check in. Now, the third step is F, firm. That's repeating it again, but with a change of tone and a change of intent. By now, you've said no a couple times, and this person's still creeping on you. So, you have every right to say whatever is comfortable for you to let them know that what they're doing is not okay with you. Whether that looks like, hey, I've told you a couple times I don't want to dance, or I said no, back off. Whatever is comfortable for you, you are more than empowered to say whatever you need to to let them know that that situation is not okay. And if you've had to say no a couple of times and they're still pressuring you, it's a good red flag that you can totally start looking for an exit out of that situation. And as a bystander, if you see this going on where someone's saying no and someone's pressuring them, trying to turn that no into a yes, which we know is not consent, it's a really great opportunity to check in on that situation and see if that person wants to use you as a tool to exit. And that leads us to our last step in setting boundaries, which is exit. So by this point, this person is clearly not respecting your boundary. And it's really important that you understand you have the right to set your own boundaries and feel empowered to notice when those boundaries are being encroached upon. And this step is really important because it's about doing your best to get out of that situation. And that may look differently for different people. So it could be grabbing a friend and going to another room or completely ending a date. Whatever you need to do to do your best to get out of that situation is totally cool. So now that we all have an understanding of how to set up boundaries, we have a demonstration we want to show you just to give you a real life example how to do that. So we're going to the juice box party. Yeah, that's funny. And while we're at the juice box party, keep in mind the SAFE acronym. S, say it, A, again, F, firm, and E, exit. And now before we get started, I just want to introduce the characters. So first we have Carissa and her best friend Cody, that's me. We're really, really excited. We're gonna to go to a party. We're gonna see some of our floor mates, namely Cole. Okay. <laughs> and then Marie over here is going to be acting as Carissa's internal thought bubble. So she's gonna be popping out every once in a while to give us some insight into what's going on in Carissa's mind. 
I am so excited to go to this party tonight. Me and my bestie Cody are gonna go and my crush Cole from two doors down on my floor is gonna be there. I am so excited. It's gonna be a good night. <laughs> hey Cole. Oh, what's up? Hey, Darren. hey, bye Cody. Hey, so how's the party going? It looks so fun. Uh, I mean, it's not bad, but it's really hot in there. Do you mind if we just go outside and chat? Sure. Cool. So how'd that test end up going last week? Oh, it was a breeze. Did my notes help you out? Oh, your notes practically got me the A on that test. Thank you so much for letting me use them. Well, I do what I do. Uh, listen, it's kind of a bunch of weirdos in there. Do you mind if we just go back to the hall and we could make our own fun? Maybe watch a movie or something? I just got to this party, and this party is bumping. I am definitely not ready to leave. I know Cole's been here for a while, but I really hope he wants to stay and have a good time with me. Say it. Cole, I just got to the party. I haven't even had a chance to say hi to our other floor mates yet. I'm having fun. I definitely don't want to leave yet. I mean, I, I get that. I've just been here for a while, so how about I come back and I'll get you in 15 minutes and we can go back to the dorms. Um, I'm kind of starting to feel slightly uncomfortable. I've already told Cole I don't want to go back to the hall with him. I want to stay at this party and have a good time. Again. Aw, oh, Cole, you know 15 minutes isn't long enough? I told you, I just got here. I definitely don't want to go back to the residence halls yet. I want to stay at the party. Carissa. Carissa. Look, I did get you those notes, so the least you could do is just walk back with me and watch a movie. Are you kidding me? I've told him several times I do not want to go back to the halls with him, and I don't owe him anything for letting me borrow notes. He keeps pushing my boundaries, and this is not cool. Firm. So Cole, I'm really appreciative you let me borrow your notes and all but I didn't know there were expectations tied to me using them. I've told you multiple times, I don't want to go back to the residence halls with you right now. I want to stay at the party. Carissa, it is late, it is dark, and it is a long way back. I don't want to go alone. If you would just walk with me, I'd really appreciate the company. Oh, there you are, Carissa. Oh, hey, Cole. How you both doing? Good. Can I get you both something to drink? No, I'm fine. Yeah, but can you wait for me for one second, Cody? Yeah, no problem. I was really excited to go to this party tonight, but all my crush Cole did all night was push my boundaries and not respect my boundaries. So I'm gonna get <laughs> out of here. Exit. Cole, you're really not listening to me. I've told you over and over, I don't want to go back to the residence halls, and I want to stay at the party. I'm gonna go hang out with Cody and the rest of our floor mates. If you want to hang out with us, awesome. But either way, I'm not walking back with you. All right, let's give it up for the Boundary Demo! All right, so boundaries are a really important skill to have. And SAFE is a great acronym to use to remember how to set those boundaries. And it's S, say it, A, again, F, firm, and E, exit. But it's also really important to understand however you want to set your boundaries is totally cool. So if someone encroaches upon my boundary once and I'm not feeling it, I have every right to do my best to get out of that situation. And setting boundaries and risk reduction strategies can feel really empowering, but they don't necessarily prevent an assault from happening. So we have an analogy to kind of put it in perspective. If I want to reduce my risk of getting in an accident as a driver, I'm going to be a really safe driver. I'm going to drive at 10 and 2, always go the speed limit, wear my seatbelt, but that doesn't prevent another driver from coming up and smacking into the side of me. It doesn't prevent an accident from happening, and that's the same with risk reduction strategies and sexual assault. Now, during that skit, it might not have seemed like Cody actually did that much. Uh, all he did was pop in and ask if we wanted something to drink. And while that might not seem like a big deal, that's actually a really easy way to be a bystander. Uh, if you notice that your friend's off alone with someone, or you notice a situation that's kind of sketchy, uh, and you don't want to go in and make it a confrontation, uh, just going in and saying, hey, how are things going? Uh, can I get you anything to drink? is a really great way to introduce yourself into that situation and allow that person to use you to exit if that's what they need to do. So, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, SAFE and risk reduction, 
and they are both really empowering. Uh, everyone has the right to feel safe, and taking safety into your own hands can be incredibly empowering. But society tends to focus a lot on risk reduction and not so much on anything else. And what that does in cases of sexual assault is it pulls the focus away from perpetrators of sexual assault and their responsibility to have obtained consent, and it puts the focus on victims of sexual assault. And it asks questions that make it seem like it was their responsibility to prevent the assault from happening. And we know that is absolutely ridiculous. It is never the victim's fault. So, uh, to help illustrate this, we've got a live theater experience for you all. Uh, and we're going to show you how absurd it is to put blame on the victim in another context. Order, order, order. All right, what do we have here today? Looks like we're settling a robbery case of sorts. That's correct, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Smith, you were held up at gunpoint at the corner of First and Main. Correct. Did you struggle with the robber? No. Why not? Well, he had a gun. I see. So you made a conscious decision to comply with his demands rather than resist? Well, yeah. Did you scream, cry out? No, I was afraid. I see. Have you ever been held up before, Mr. Smith? No. Have you ever given money away before? Well, yeah, of course. Ah, and you did so willingly. What are you getting at? Well, you see, Mr. Smith, you've given money away in the past. In fact, you have quite the reputation for philanthropy. Case in point, exhibit A. That's ridiculous. <laughs> now, Mr. Smith, how can we be so sure that you aren't contriving to have your money taken from you by force? Listen, if I want to- Never mind, Mr. Smith! What time was this hold up? I don't know, 11 p.m.? You were out on the streets at 11 p.m. doing what? Just walking. <laughs> Just walking. You're aware it's dangerous to be out on the streets that late. You weren't aware you could have been held up? I suppose I never thought about it. What were you wearing, Mr. Smith? What was I wearing? A suit, I guess. Ah, an expensive suit. Well, yeah, it was Armani. So in other words, Mr. Smith, you were out on the streets late at night practically advertising the fact that you were a target for easy money. I mean, if we didn't know better, Mr. Smith, we might say you were asking for it. Mightn't we? Order, order, order. This is ridiculous. You're blaming the victim. The real question should be who mugged Mr. Smith and why that person thought it was okay to do. You're a terrible lawyer. Where'd you get your law degree? See you, law school? Preposterous! Get out of here! All right, so who thought it was absolutely ridiculous that Mr. Smith, Cody, was being blamed for being robbed? Yeah, it should be everyone. Uh, but uh, what's really sad is that this happens quite frequently in cases of sexual assault. Uh, we see questions asked like, what were they wearing? Had they been drinking? Why didn't they fight back? And all of those questions make it seem like it was the victim's responsibility to prevent the assault. And we know that is not the case. What we need to focus on is perpetrators of sexual assault and why they did not obtain consent. So, uh, we've gone over quite a bit, so I want to take a step back and kind of sum up some of the concepts that we've been talking about. All right, so it's really important to understand that the only person who causes rape is the person who chooses to commit it. It is never the victim or survivor's fault. So we have another analogy. I should be able to go out and get wasted drunk, stumble home, take off all my clothes, and pass out naked in the alleyway. And the only way that I will wake up a victim of sexual assault is if somebody chooses to capitalize on my vulnerability. And risk reduction strategies are really empowering because everyone has the right to feel safe. And bystander intervention is a really great way to stop sexual assault in the moment as we see it happening around us. But neither of these strategies actually prevent the assaults from happening in the first place. So I know that as long as I obtain consent in every situation that I go into, I'm never going to be the cause of a sexual assault. And if we all make that pledge, we can work towards ending sexual assault here at CSU and around Fort Collins. And 
Obtaining consent and asking for consent is a really easy thing to do. It's not that hard. Uh, we can definitely get on board with this. So uh, now that we've talked about some ways that we can work towards ending sexual violence, uh, we want to talk to you about ways that you can support people that are survivors of sexual assault in your life. So we're going to next category is songs about sex. Sex? Nah, 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 come on. Nah, 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 come on. Come on, come on. Baby, let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about